I said, miss, I'll be right with you. She said, no, I need you to get the fuck over here now. A customer said this to me. Customer said, I need you to get the F over here now. What? Who are you talking to? <laughs> Like I'm about to fight y'all. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Princess Melissa aka It's the Princess and I'm back with another video Period. I'm about to tell y'all a funny story. It's not even funny. It's just like really it's whatever I'm gonna be telling y'all the story of how I lost my job at McDonald's so Basically, it all started when I, how old was I? I think I was, hold on, 17. I think I was 18 years old when I was working at McDonald's. I started working at McDonald's when, uh, let's see, after my sophomore year of college. I think I had just turned 18. And, like, I needed a job really bad. I had came home for the summer. I was looking for a job. And I really needed a job really badly. So, my boyfriend, Lavelle, he worked at uh, BMW at the time. And Lavelle was like, Oh, babe, like, you know, McDonald's is hiring. Mind you, this was a time where I did not have a car yet. I had just got my license. Like, your girl was, I came, you know, I came through some bogus stuff, y'all. Anyways, so, um, Lavelle was like, you know, and mind you guys, I was living with Lavelle during this summer. Like, Lavelle had just got his own apartment. He, he was 20, and I was 18. He had just got his own apartment, and... Um, he was telling me, like, you know, babe, like, we date. Like, you know, you can stay here with me. So, you know, me being me, I didn't want to stay at home. My parents, I just spent a whole year in college again. I was like, mm, yeah, I'm going to stay with my man. So, I lived with Lavelle. I basically took all my clothes, packed everything up, and I moved with Lavelle. So, I was staying with him for that summer. And he was like, oh, babe, like, you know, you um, can work at McDonald's. It's right across the street from my job. It's right across from BMW. He was like, um, and then tell them that we need the same hours or very close hours so that we can ride together and we can both just ride in my car. So it worked out exactly how we planned it. I told the new boss everything and she was very cool. She was very considerate and she was willing to, so she was willing to let me, you know, work with like work that way or whatever so everything was good i was working at that mcdonald's and life was good i was making a paycheck i want to say like four hundred dollars or something like that like mind you i was 18 years old this was like one of my first real jobs with an actual real check stub that wasn't like under the table so i was super excited lavelle and his cousin would come see me on my break like i was loving it and then I had a really good summer. I stacked up a lot of money for McDonald's. And then it was time for me to go back to school. And I was going into my junior year. So anyways, whatever. Time flew by. I was working there. Blah, blah, I went into my junior year in college. So I, I, go, I went to a university. So when it was time for me to go back to school, I was like, dang, like, you know, I really need to find a job or whatever. So uh, I had just got an off-campus apartment. My mom told me, like, she was not going to help me fund that apartment. If I wanted that apartment, I was going to have to pay for it myself and blah, blah, blah. You know how parents be. So I was like, you know what? I'm grown. I'm going to do this. I don't care if my mama don't help me. I'm going to get a job down there at the school. Lavelle said he was going to help me pay for my apartment too, which he did. And I was like, I'm just going to make it work. Whatever. I applied for jobs. And guess where I applied to? McDonald's. So... I applied for McDonald's, I set up an interview, um, and then I went down there when it was time to move in. The, on move-in day, I scheduled my interview, and they hired me. So I was super happy about that. I'm like, yes, like the school year had just started. I had got me a job. I got my refund check, so I paid my rent up for the semester. And then, you know, I was like, I'm about to start saving up for a car and blah, blah, blah. So I was working at McDonald's, and then I was saving up for a car, and as I was saving up my dad wind up buying me a car so my dad wind up getting me a car and i'm happy because i used to walk to this job y'all like i this job was far like far like you wouldn't want your and then like the school the town that my school was in was like a country 
in the middle of bumblefuck. So you wouldn't want your kid walking. But I was walking to this job, giving them my all, giving them my all, y'all. So my dad wound up buying me a car. So now I feel like I'm really on and popping. Uh, my dad bought me a car, got my apartment, got my job, you know. Say I'm, I'm getting my money, getting my life right, whatever. So everything was going good and dandy. And, um, you know, I was making the best of everything. And I was having a great time in life. All of a sudden, the absolute worst thing in my whole life literally could have happened. And I do mean my whole life. My grandpa, who is practically my dad, who raised me since I was a baby, with my mom, my grandma, and my cousins, freaking died. He freaking died. He literally, uh, I came back home for winter break, and my birthday is January 14th, and he literally died on January 12th. We were supposed to, we were scheduled to go back, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we were scheduled to go back to school on, I want to say, like, my birthday. Or the 13th or something. I don't know. And he wound up dying the same, like like a day before I left for school. I was super sad about everything. I just, I basically shut down. I was really sad. I was actually depressed because like I had never experienced a really close death like that. Like I have friends die, but not nobody in my family. Like grandpa actually raised me. So I was super sad. I cried every day. Like I just was terrible. So it was time for me to go back to school. And when my grandpa passed away, I called the school because it was the first week back for the first semester and told the school that I was not coming. I had to provide a bunch of documents. It was super stressful for me and my family. And I was just overly stressed because at this time I'm like, 20 years old now, I think, and I'm dealing with all this, or I'm 19, going on 20, dealing with all this crazy stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God, like, I need a break. So I told McDonald's that I wasn't coming in for quite some time. I told them. A about a week and a half passed by, I came back to school. So I had already missed like a week and a half, almost two weeks of school to begin the semester. I hadn't been to work or anything like that. So somebody told them that I was back in town. So McDonald's gets to call on my phone, like, hey, Melissa, like, when are you coming back, blah, 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 blah. So I told McDonald's, you know, last time I talked to you guys, you guys said it was okay if I took time to mourn. I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to mourn, but, you know, I need that time. So McDonald's basically hung it over my head, like, you know, if you don't come back, you're going to lose your job. So I'm just like, oh, you know, I just told y'all, like, I just got my car. My daddy making me pay pretty much anything that goes wrong with the car. Um... My apartment, I'm paying for that out of pocket. So at this point, it's like, oh my God, like, I can't even mourn a death because McDonald's want me to come back. So at this point, I'm like, okay, well, my granddaddy was a hard worker and life goes on. So I'm just like, F it. I'm just going to go into the job and I'm just going to do my work and I'm going to leave. So I was doing that for like, I want to say a week, maybe two. I had made it two weeks. Week three comes. Now, y'all. It's the, it just happened to be this one day that they caught me on a bad day. Three comes. So in the little town that I go to school in, it's literally in the middle of nowhere. So when every, all the college kids would go away, it's only high school kids left to work the jobs. So my manager happened to be a 16-year-old girl. And the way McDonald's works is like you have like a ship leader, then like a manager, and then supervisors, then a bunch of other supervisors. So like she just managed, she was like a ship manager basically. She could manage, she could open a cash register and stuff like that. But this girl is 16. And she was super mean, super rude, and had a bad attitude. And she was finna get popped. I was tired of her. So every time I was coming to work, she was saying stuff to me, Melissa, you're a minute late. Melissa, you need to tuck in your McDonald's pants. Melissa, your pants are dirty. You need to purchase some more pants. This girl is 16. Mind y'all, I just got my life together. My granddaddy just died. Y'all forcing me to come back. I'm pissed. So she called me on a bad day, so she's like talking to me. This one day, I come in work, and she starts saying something to me. So I ignored her, right? So then the girl gonna say she said something else to me. Again, I ignored her. When I walked in, she said something like, oh, you're you're, fi you're five minutes late. I was like, sorry, I'm late. Like, you know, I've been having a really hard time getting to work, but I'm here now. Then she was like, oh, just don't let it happen again. But she said it in a very rude way. So y'all know me. I was like, okay, like, you know, little girl. I, told, I, had a, I was having a really rough time, y'all. I was having a really rough first month back. It was my birthday month. It was terrible. So I told her, like, you know what, little girl, I really don't, I really don't appreciate you talking to me the way that you 
you be talking to me. So this girl says, I can talk to you however I want to talk to you. <laughs> Baby, bye. Baby, bye. So I turned around. I said, oh, baby, you're not talking to me. And she said, yes, I am. I said, little girl, I will come over there and slap you. Stop playing with me. This little girl turns around and says, if you're going to fight, she manager, she turned around and said, if you want to fight, come on then. She said, I'll mess you up. I said, little girl, you do not want no smoke. So at this point, she's arguing with me. Mind y'all, this is a Friday night that I was coming in. So, you know, college kids out on Friday nights, we super busy, drive through super busy. So I'm arguing with a manager, a 16 year old manager. Then all of a sudden this customer comes up and she's screaming about some chicken nuggets. She's screaming about chicken nuggets or something. So I told her, excuse me, miss, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be right with you. At this point, I'm irritated. I'm already irritated about life. This girl irritated me, giving me a hard time. Then this customer come up screaming about some doggone chicken nuggets. I said, Miss, I'll be right with you. She said, no, I need you to get the fuck over here now. A customer said this to me. Customer said, I need you to get the F over here now. What? Who are you talking to? Mind y'all, this is all happening on the same day. So I'm just like so irritated. So you do not you will not be able to get service if you continue to talk to me like that manager the since you are manager just standing here at this point like watching it go down because she just arguing with me so she liking a good argument the lady says you need to fix these effing nuggets right now because my son doesn't want them now this lady was missing teeth in her mouth y'all she was missing teeth she was old she looked like she was on drugs so me being me i was fed up i turned around i said bitch but i put emphasis to like Boop. Like, I put emphasis in it, like, bitch. Like, I really had it. I said, bitch. I told her this, y'all. You worried about chicken nuggets when you need to be worried about your teeth because you missing teeth in the front of your mouth. She said, I'm going to tell the manager. At this point, the six-year-old manager, she already running to the back, getting ready to write stuff down and stuff. So I went back there and I asked her, like, you know what, can I just go home? So this, at this point, I'm irritated. I'm frustrated. Customer me getting to I'm irritated. The six-year-old girl then says, no, you can't go anywhere. Who was she talking to? Who was she talking to? Because I'm about to walk out at this point. Like, now, you arguing with me, a customer arguing with me, like, I need to leave. The girl runs to the back again. She runs to the other side. So, it's like, it's like a middle part. You know how McDonald's is in the front. They got the people giving you your food. They got that small side with the fries and the meat people. And then they just got the back of the manager's office. And then they got the employee break room. She ran from the manager's office to the employee break room to get the supervisor on staff. And then start crying in this man's arms. Asking her, like, why is she crying? Why is she crying? And she told him why. That I said something, something, something. Then she told him about what I said to the customer and then it turned into a whole thing so i was like you know what i'm leaving so they let me go for the night and i didn't hear about it no more like i took off the next day i was like i'm not going in there so like a day or two later i was scheduled to go in for another shift so i as i was getting ready to go into there for another shift i called my friend and i was trying to talk to her and she also worked at mcdonald's so my friend told me like girl i heard about what happened with you and so and so that young girl like you know she had me messed up she was really being rude the customer was being rude like i was over it she was like girl now why you go and get yourself fired like that i said fired who got fired i was like i didn't get fired i left oh she was like oh yeah like they said that they was gonna fire you as soon as you walked in they because they can't they're not allowed to fire you over the phone so they was gonna wait until you came in today for your shift to fire you fire you so you need to go in there and like Tell them, talk to them because they're trying to fire you. I'm like, dang. So whole time, they was about to one. They took all this, this story that this girl did, did and ran with it. Now, I know I said, I know I said what I said, but that girl had it coming. She was acting crazy. She was feeling herself because she was 16 and the manager. And I just, I wasn't feeling that. I just wasn't. And they was just going to fire me and not say nothing. Crazy.
I decided to call them and I asked them, I said, hi, can I speak to the general manager on staff? They said, actually, we're wanting to have a meeting with you on your shift today. So when you come in, we'll talk to you then. I said, no, no, I think I want to talk to you guys on the phone first. Then, and then I said, I hear that you guys are trying to fire me. And I didn't even get to tell my side of the story about how, me and about how the customer spoke to me disrespectful. And now I'm hearing through the grapevine that I'm about to get fired. And then they said, well, you can't go around talking to staff management like that, regardless of what they say to you. You need to take the high road. Who? This little girl, just, she's so big and bad, had all this to say. The customers were so big and bad. And I just had a death in the family, and y'all forced me to come back to this place. Knowing that I needed some grieving time. So yeah, everybody up in here got cursed out that night. Yes, they did. So when you just come in, I said, you know what? I'm, I said, I don't understand why we're going through this. This is really bogus. Like, I'm not going to tell my side of the story. Y'all basically trying to fire me when I come in. And I don't think I should come in because y'all trying to fire me. And they kept saying, no, we're not going to fire you. We just have to write a report. We just have to submit this. to. just need to submit this to the corporate headquarters and let them know what happened and blah, blah, blah. And the general manager told me the truth. She told me, yeah, when you come in, we are going to have to have you sign your termination papers because you can no longer work with us. You're doing this and that. I said, oh no, y'all don't have to put my termination papers nowhere because I'm not coming in because I quit. Because y'all know how that is. If you know you're about to get fired, you got to beat them to the punchline. I quit. I quit. Okay. I quit. I quit. Yep. I quit. Beat them to the punchline at that point. It don't even matter. Because then if you say you, if you got fired, you can't even put that on your resume because you got fired. So you just got to say, I quit. I said, you know what? I quit. I would not be coming in here. Don't worry about it. I'll be there to pick up my last check. So, that's how I wind up getting fired from McDonald's. I know I hate McDonald's. I hate everything about McDonald's. And that job is the reason why. I hate everything about McDonald's. I hate the food. I hate the uniform. I hate those silly little hats they're wearing. I hate McDonald's with a passion. Really, if I'm just starving and I have nothing else to eat and there's nothing else open on this planet, I would starve because I hate McDonald's that much. It, it, it turned out. The, that same manager that got me fired, the little girl started working at Wendy's the next year. And that next year when I was a senior, I drove to Wendy's to get some food and I saw her there. And I said, oh, what's up, bitch? And she was so scared, y'all. I mean, she was scared. I'm not a bully in no way, shape, or my fashion, but I had all this stuff going on. My life was in shambles and, like, these people thought they was going to play with me. And they wasn't. So anyways, guys, that's my story. That is the story of how I got fired slash quit McDonald's. I hope you guys like this story time. I try to do some more story times and some better story times. But, you know, this was one of the ones I could think of that I thought was pretty funny and also just, you know, random while I'm getting dressed. So this was my story time. I hope you guys like it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more videos from your girl, Princess Yo. Princess Melissa. There's some wars in this house. There's some wars in this house. There's some wars in this house.